So, so uh, little, a little bit first of an introduction to about Cybula. Cybula is an SME. We're based in uh, uh, the computer science department. We actually have embedded offices in computer science here in, uh, at, at York. And actually, what I'm going to talk about today is not actually our core business. Um, our core business is actually pattern matching, looking for patterns in huge amounts of signal data. And we apply that to the engineering world and to uh, the medical world, so we kind of monitor ECG and brain patterns and uh, monitor aero engines and uh, do prognostic and diagnostic kind of event detection for that. So this KTN for me is quite an unusual, an unusual event. My, my usual KTNs are aerospace and electronics and ICT and computing, so um, uh, forgive me if I don't get quite the, 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 the target right. But what I'm going to talk about today is... Um, a piece of technology that's come through uh, the research group within the university that we uh, collaborate with, and it's called HueShare. And it's a cloud-based computing platform. Uh, and for those of you that are perhaps not familiar with cloud computing, um, there's a lot of noise, has been for a while, about um, if you're in a business, let's say you're in a, a creative business such as yours, you're, you're starting up or you're kind of trying to develop, trying to grow, um, you really should not be in uh, man trying to manage IT. It's not your core activity. Um, it becomes expensive to do so. You need specialist skills. And if you look at the way larger organizations, big corporations have become with, uh, have become with legacy systems, like old, old computing systems, they get themselves tied in knots and it slows them down in terms of development, makes them very cumbersome. So the idea of cloud computing is that somebody else, somebody else hosts, runs and hosts your, your uh, applications for you, your data and your applications for you. The problem with cloud computing is that um, it's, it's become, uh, th there, there are several issues, but, but one of them is for, for specialist applications, it, it becomes quite expensive to put your particular application in a cloud in a cloud environment and run it. So the big companies, the Microsofts, the, the Googles, they can do it at their level. They're selling lots of their software and they can, host, they can put their applications onto the cloud and that's fine, you can use it. But for you as a small, a small enterprise, difficult, very costly to do. So, so this is where Ushare comes in and um, what it actually is, is a... Um, it's really what it says on the tin here. Uh, it's, it's a cloud platform, so it's, it's hosted, it's machines running, computer machines running uh, remotely from your business. It's accessed via the web, and it allows any user community to post data. Uh, we work particularly with large data, but you can post any kind of data to it. It can be videos, text, images, um, uh, numerical data. And... In fact, I'd say there are, other, there are other kind of data sharing sites, but the thing that makes this particularly unique is you can also uh, post apps or your computer code, your programs, and you can actually allow people to access those apps and execute them. So um, let me take an, a, a relevant example. In the, in the research community, this, this has been designed particularly for academic research collaboration. Uh, so it's where you get uh, big science that's across multiple, multiple sites, collaborative academics in multiple institutions, some perhaps creating data, others perhaps creating ways of analysing that data, of transforming that data, and they actually want to get together and share and, and, and collaborate together. And that's what, what, it's, what it's been designed for. But we believe there are other interesting applications of this technology in the commercial world. And let me give you a feel for some of the ones we're kind of working on <clears throat> at the moment. The, the interesting aspect is that, that the site itself allows you to, you can design the front end of the site as, as your business requires. Um, so it allows lots of different communities to use, use the product. And you can see we're work, currently working on four. 
we have, we have an application called Carmen, which is about sharing neuroscience research data, so kind of uh, in, the, in the academic kind of world. We have a, a, a medical application. We're working with uh, King's College Hospital and uh, Imperial University, where we're looking at event detection in, in brain data for people with traumatic brain injury. Um, we have an engineering application where we have data streaming into the site, so data coming into the, a particular site and automatically running apps, running detection, event detection apps, so we're kind of monitoring, continually monitoring assets, yeah? And we have a, 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 a generic site, our baseline site, which, we, which we've branded UShare, which is for general, general academic use doesn't particularly focus on creative industries, but I hope it gives you the, the spread of the different types of applications that are rather generic uh, platform that this, that this facility offers. In terms of broader examples of applications, we, we think it, it could be used in the creative industries, uh, looking at anything where you're taking large data, trying to manipulate that large data, so post-production activities, uh, you're trying to try transform video or sound, trying to analyze video, analyze images, that kind of thing. Do the kinds of search techniques that, that, uh, that, that was previously shown. Um, it's useful for data streaming and visualization of large data. So very often when you're trying to handle large data, you don't actually want to download it to your machine. There's lots of ways of sharing data in, in, in these kind of uh, compute environments, but in the end, you're forced to download large data. Why do you want to do that? You just want the knowledge at the end of that large data, and that's what, that's what the data streaming visualization aspects are about. I talked a little bit about medical aspects. We, we're getting quite a few interesting applications where people have... Uh, they're running very old legacy systems, and that's, that's no more true than in the NHS, um, where uh, people are actively saying, well, I, I, I really want to run my application. It was written 20 years ago in, in Fortran computer language, no longer written, and I want to run my service in a more modern environment because, because I want to be able to handle that data, I want to be able to visualize the output, I want to look at it, I want to look at it on a, on a phone, or I want to look at it on a tablet. I don't want to be stuck in my office in, uh, behind a machine. So this, this facility offers that. And the other, the other aspects are, are, are services which use public data feeds, and we've had some, some inquiries in that, in that kind of area as well. Very much a site that's uh, in development with specific applications, but it strikes me just from some of the talks this morning that there's some interesting kind of lines of activity here. Um, just to kind of summarize, what it offers you is a potential low-cost way for any business with a software application that wants to expose their, that your product or your application to a global audience. It's a very rapid way of doing that. What, what we are not in the game of, we, we, we're in the game of, we will, we will make money, if you like, if I can use that, if you can use that term, by running the service, running the platform. We are not interested in, in trying to create artificial value from the intellectual property that's behind your data and your application. Our job is just to make sure we're running a service, a valid service, 24-7. Okay? And that's you, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much.